right too. Talk is never enough. But at least it's a beginning. And I think we are beginning to see the beginning of change. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, we have said, I mean, I have said, I'm looking forward to coming to Burma when you are inaugurated as the <laughs> head of government there, quite seriously. Oh, I had to... We couldn't hear here because of the applause for, for that. Would, would you repeat that? I have to be very, very ambitious because I do want, want him to come. <laughs> We're all witness to something that's going on here. <laughs> uh, mutual admiration and more. Um, when you, what is it that the world can do uh, to, to aid in the struggle that you're engaged in? Awareness. I always say that. What we really need is awareness. Awareness of what is going on in our country. It's uh, not easy to know exactly what is going on. Sometimes I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure what's going on because so much is going on at the same time. But I think we need to cultivate an awareness of what is going on around us. And if the world wants to help Burma, the world needs to know what is happening in Burma. And this means a lot of effort. You don't get to know what's happening in a place just by looking at a newspaper from time to time. I think you really have to follow what is going on there and to think very, very deeply about the implications of every small change that you notice. Change is not always for the better. And even if it is for the better, it's not always sustained. So what we need is change in the right direction that is steady and sustainable. And we would like the world to keep an eye on what is happening. Can, can your neighbors, India and China, do more? Burma and to help us. We know that it's the people of the world. And uh, whether we want to or not, have to. I'm sorry? Uh, go ahead, continue. We, we, we're, I couldn't we're, hear you. Can you hear us as well? OK, good. Um, I'm sorry? I think she's gone. No, no, I don't. Did we lose? Okay. I'm going to, whether, whether she can continue to hear us or not, I want to invite President Clinton to, to come to her stage uh, to talk with her uh, when he comes back uh, and is able to come out of here. Because he said to me uh, how excited he was, as I said earlier, uh, to be here uh, when this conversation was going to take place with you. So when he arrives, I hope he'll come back and join us. Um, but awareness is one thing that you suggested. We have to be aware, and you just can't uh, come and occasionally check on it. You have to have an ongoing sense of, of the necessity of awareness and contribution. Uh, but what is it that governments can do? What can President Obama do? And what can Hu Jintao do? And what can uh, Mahmoud Singh do in terms of, of changing the dynamics? of the situation? I think first of all they should listen to the voice of the people of Burma. What is it that the people of Burma want? And then they can decide how they can help. Because with Hu Jintao and Manmohan Singh, we are neighbors. Burma is a neighbor of China and India. And we've always been good neighbors. And we would like to continue to be good neighbors. But times have changed and circumstances have changed and to continue to be good neighbors certain policies will have to be changed. I believe that the best kind of relationship between any two countries is a good relationship between two people, not between the governments, between the people. And this I would like every head of government to keep in mind 
but it's the people who matter long run. And with the United States government, I would like to take the opportunity to say that I very much appreciate what they have done for us over, over two decades now to help us in our struggle for democracy. But of course, we always think that more can be done. And I think uh, uh, this is so with people who are struggling. We always think that more can be done. And we would appreciate it very much if the process is helped by giving the, by the right kind of encouragement in the right direction. This is not always easy. You have to decide what is the right kind of encouragement. And of course, they're always prepared to tell you what we think is the right kind of encouragement. <laughs> is there specific things that you need uh, in order to communicate your own struggle and, and your own passion? Do you have the access that you now need in order to really communicate? Or are there limitations in terms of what you can do? Well, this is uh, the, the kind of thing that I could never have done seven years ago, yes, to speak indeed. to you like this and to see you like this. So we are making progress, but we need more of this sort of progress. And what I'm very concerned about is that we need our young people to be more fit to cope with the challenges of this modern world. We need a better education system in Burma. We need better health care. We need a more open society in which our young people can realize the potential. And are they aware, are the young people of Burma aware of, of your own struggle? Does everyone understand uh, the plight that you have had to undergo? I wouldn't say that everyone is aware of it or everyone understands, but I can say that a lot of young people are supporting us and I think more and more every day and that's terribly encouraging. We are very much involved in the, the, in the network for democracy. Social media plays a role in Burma? Just sorry? Social media, as you know, played a prominent role in the uh, Arab Spring. Does it play a role in Burma? Uh, I, I don't think uh, the media has quite the position here that it had in the Arab countries when the Spring began. Because uh, the, in Burma, we do not, not have the, the, uh, such a developed communication system, shall we put it that way? And very few of our young people really have access to the modern IT technology that played such a, an important role in the Arab Spring. You have talked about freedom from fear. Uh, remind us how you have been able to have a freedom from fear and why it's crucial in living the life that you have lived. Well, if you were frightened all the time, you wouldn't be able to do a thing under the circumstances in which I had to live. And so I think I had to learn not to let fear control me. By freedom from fear, I do not mean that you don't feel free, you feel fear, but that you don't let fear control you. That it's not fear that you decide what you do or what you not do. You have to get over that fear in order to be committed to a cause in which you believe. You've also talked about changing values rather than regimes. Um, how will you achieve a change in values? By talking and talking, I suppose. <laughs> so far, that is what I seem to have been doing. I try to talk to as many of our people as possible to make them understand what we are working for, what we are struggling for, and why. I think basically people have the right to know what other people are doing. If, if you want uh, them to join us, then they must know why we are doing what we are doing. But I have to say that we don't need to explain that much. A lot of our people understand, because they want the same thing that we want. 
Uh, it gives me great honor again, as I mentioned earlier, to invite President Clinton back because uh, of what he said to this audience and, and what he said to me. So please invite President Clinton. Hello. I just Hello? was I was just jealous of the bishop and Charlie having all the fun with you. <laughs> and I wanted to thank you for doing this. And thank you for continuing to lead and inspire us all. And thank you for being willing to make all the sacrifices you have made to live the beautiful life you live. We're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you so much. This has been uh, an, an remarkable experience for everybody in this room uh, to have this opportunity to see and hear you live as you were speaking these words of, of aspiration and affirmation about uh, universal values uh, and uh, your own sense of the very real possibilities of political change. Uh, I suspect that President Clinton, as well as uh, Archbishop Tutu, would very much like to be there on a day that uh, you see the democracy that you have fought for achieved, uh, and they could be on a plane to uh, watch you as they watch Nelson Mandela uh, find the freedom for the people of South Africa. Thank you again for a wonderful opportunity. This audience in New York is standing and appreciate.